Well, welcome to a lovely sunny morning here in Cambridge. Um, it's so nice at this time of the year because a lot of the orchids start waking up after the what seems to be a very long winter. Um, and my first task in the morning, every morning, is to do a bit of misting. I particularly concentrate, obviously, on the um, mounted plants that have um, more prone to drying out. And what I try to do is to just um, mist over the mounts and the roots in particular, trying to avoid getting any excess water in the leaf axles because that can lead to rot if the water doesn't completely dry off before nightfall. And it doesn't take long just to whiz round, just um, sort of judging about how much they actually need. Some of them need a bit more than others. If you can see that they're already um, quite moist from the day before, then there's no point in putting any more on or just misting it lightly. And I have a sort of rolling program of uh, watering all the plants thoroughly. And I do that by taking the plant, dunking it in the rainwater with a nutrient solution and pouring it through once or twice and then letting it drain. And as you can see here, this is um, one of my dendrochelums, which is completely finished flowering. So I get my glasses and with a small pair of scissors, just do a bit of tidying up of the completely dead flower stems. The, int the interesting thing about these is after the, I'll just show you, as the, as the flowers have dropped, they're, they're actually quite decorative. They're like um, little sort of fish bones. And um, I have seen plants with them left on and in a way they actually, actually look quite decorative but I prefer, prefer to um, cut them off. <laughs> now, this is Sologeny albo lutea, uh, which I featured in a previous video about this time last year. And you can see it's got a mass of flowers. Another of those orchids that has a slightly strange scent that not everyone would uh, really approve of, but uh, worth going <laughs> for its interesting scent. Um, I've got this hanging quite low down, hanging because it needs that to display the um, pendant flowers which are soon going to fade because it's been out for um, several weeks already. So it's a very good performer. And the interesting thing about this is last year I drew attention to the fact that it still had a few of these very unsightly yellow leaves because I had grown this for quite a long time and because the leaves are quite thick I'd had it hanging fairly high up where it got quite a lot of light and I couldn't really work out why the foliage was so sort of um, uh, faded and yellow. It looked really unpleasant and I asked quite a lot of people and nobody seemed to have come up with a sensible answer. Eventually I spoke to somebody who said that in the wild they grow quite low down on tree trunks in quite deep shade and so at that point I lowered it down. And it's taken, because the, the, the leaves last several years after they've grown, it's taken probably three years to gradually um, get rid of all the old unsightly leaves. And this is one of the last ones, I'm pleased to say. So now, as you can see, all the foliage that is left on this plant is beautiful. It's obviously getting enough light because you can see how many flowers it's got. Is quite a sort of untidy grower and tends to grow out of the pot like a lot of Sologenes. And the way that I combat that is to sort of, uh, well, I suppose you could say, sort of stitch it up with some garden twine um, to try and uh, sort of bunch it up and keep it a bit more compact than it would be otherwise. Um, it's probably time for me to take um, a section off and repot it and then start growing a new one. Now, the cool, um, humid, um, shady conditions in this conservatory suit both Sologenes and Dendrochelums very well. This is Dendrochelum cornutum and it flowers unfailingly at this time of the year with an absolute mass of these incredibly elegant um, flowers. 
Now I have this because it follows on directly after the three forms of Dendrochelum glumaceum that I have. They start flowering at about the second, third week of January, following through um, the whole of February, just about into March. And then this one performs in March. So I have a really long period of dendrochelums. This one has a light, interesting, although not everybody would be delighted by it sort of scent. Whereas Dendrochilum glumaceum, as I said in a previous video, has a li really lovely spicy scent. Anyway, this comes from um, Java, Borneo, Indonesia, uh, a very wide geographical range and also a very wide range of altitudes. So it can be grown cool right the way through to warm. In here, it's intermediate and it, um, it's a very prolific orchid in, in my case. So I love it. It's just about beginning to finish. This is probably the first flower spike that opens and you can see the flowers are dropping, but it performs over a period of three weeks or so, perhaps a little bit more. So it's a really lovely orchid to have. This is my Zygopetalum Merlin's Magic. And this is another really reliable performer for me. It flowers at this time every year. This year it's got um, two flower spikes, although it should have had three, uh, but sadly I broke one off because, and I'm going to explain, the stems as they grow are incredibly brittle. They're sort of very succulent and the slightest sort of bends to them and they break off. And this normally lives over by the door where I like to sort of sniff it on the way in. And I just leant across just gently to some plants behind and broke one of the uh, developing flower spikes off a few weeks ago, which was quite upsetting. And that's because, and I should have learnt my lesson in the past, what I normally do is insert these long, thin bamboo canes when the flower spikes are sort of just above the foliage, and then tie them, tie the flower spikes to the bamboo cane as they go, being sure, as you know, to put something in the top of the um, cane so that I don't have an accident. That also ensures that the flower spikes present themselves really well. You see in this case they're a bit sort of higgledy-piggledy and that's because I didn't stake them at an early enough stage. Normally I like to let orchids sort of grow and the flowers to develop as naturally as possible but that's not the case with this and it's really important to stake them. In this conservatory, the cool, moist conditions um, ideally suit zygopetalums. I've seen them growing in the wild in South America and they're sort of semi-terrestrial. I've seen them at the base of trees, not in soil, but in sort of deep leaf litter. And they do like, apart from the moist, um, humid, cool conditions, they do like a little bit of extra feeding, I think. And so what I do, Every um, spring I just get a few of these um, slow-release granules, not overdoing it, and just sprinkle them on the surface of the bark so that they just get that little bit of extra nutrients compared to what they'd normally get. The reason that I grow this, and I've grown it for a long time, divided it many times and given bits away, is because they have an absolutely wonderful scent. It's one of the best smelling orchids I've got in here. Um, it will actually fill the whole conservatory with scent, especially in the mornings if it's warm. The reason is that, and I have to look at my notes, um, it's got a very large proportion of Zygopetalum crinitum in it, which is highly scented, quite a lot of Maculatum, which is also scented, and a bit of Maxillari, which is another scented Zygopetalum. So all three going back of its parents are highly beautifully scented orchids. And they seem to have combined in this variety to produce a really vigorous, free flowering, very reliable variety. It was registered in the year 2000 by an orchid nursery in this country um, called Ivan's Orchids, and I'm very grateful to them. You can see um, it's absolutely uh, quite a monster. Um, just the same as the other Zygopetalum hybrid that I've got that flowers regularly in the autumn. Anyway, so um, 
I never really know how long to make these videos, but I'll wind up for now. So thanks ever so much for watching this video. Keep subscribing and hope to see you in the next one.